Welcome to another Friday Functions video and today we're going to talk about how functions can help you do dynamic data in your UI as opposed to putting quotes around everything and hard so to speak coding your text on your page you can actually have it use the data source and then change dynamically as the data changes. So I want to do this in this video to show you a different way to help people browse the data in a gallery. A lot of times, you know, we use the search because that is pre-configured for us. But when it comes to searching, when it comes to long lists, I kind of have to have a clue what I'm searching for. What if we could help our consumers to search maybe by the alphabet so that they could see short chunks of information or by some category or group, and then they can filter down to that category or group. A little bit different than using the keyword search is the idea of giving your user another way to browse chunks of information in the gal in the list that, that it's based on. Now, I happen to be using a SharePoint list today, and I'm just using I'm I this was inspired by my desire to eat better. So when you're eating clean, you want to pay attention to not only the calories you're eating, but also the value of those calories. Are they empty calories or is there some nutritional value there. So that's what inspired this list, not really a business scenario, but the business scenario definitely applies here whenever you have a list of items that you want to help your consumer to browse. So we're going to cover a few functions today. We're going to cover the left function, the start swift function, which you already know, but I'm going to show you a different way of using it, and then also the uh, color fade function. So we're going to look at all three of those and this is all about making your galleries a little bit more interesting. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and build an app and I'm just going to call this um, my fruits plan. Okay. I always have a hard time figuring out what do I call things, but you know, you can always change the name later. So I'm going to click create and then Power Apps is going to do its lovely work for me. It's going to build me a three screen app because I did say create app. I didn't do customized form. So I'm going to get a three screen app and the three screen app will already have certain things configured like search. Now we went over in a previous functions Friday video, how that formula for search works. And we're going to use that in a different way today. So pay, pay attention because this is going to be kind of an interesting approach to the same philosophy, so to speak. So it's building my app. It's almost done. I can tell because I can see the canvas now. And it's going to drop down those three screens and it's going to add all that functionality that I'm used to it doing. And I am still very grateful for the work that's being done for me here. So I'm going to start by working in the browse gallery. I'm going to skip this. I'm going to zoom in so you can see the gallery, how it ended up. The first thing I'm going to do is change the theme. You know, a lot of people forget that we have themes here. These themes are helpful, you know, because you can get tired of that blue, right? You can get tired of that blue quick. So you can change your theme and, and do different themes. Be willing to do that. I love the gray theme. Um, the other thing I want to do is change the fields that are shown here. So I'm going to click on the browse gallery. And then after I click on that, I'm going to go over to the right sides and I've clicked on it in the screen explorer on the far left. This makes sure that the whole gallery is selected. Then I'm going to go over to the far right in the properties panel and click the word fruits, which is what my data is. Again, I'm using SharePoint, but you can use any data source you'd like. All of this will still work with any tabular data source. So I just use SharePoint because it's easy for me. All right. And point it out. I want to point out to you that now we've added an edit data, edit data link to your SharePoint data on the panel which I find awesome because I used to forget where my lists are. Now, if you click edit data, it will open the list for you even months after you've created this app. I really like that. So now I'm going to change the layout to uh, title and subtitle because I only want two fields to show. And then underneath there, I'm going to change the title field to just say the title in the list. And I'm going to change the subtitle field to say the serving size. So while I'm in serving size, because that's not like a high priority, I'm going to change it to a light gray. 
and I'm going to make it 16 points in size. And I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to give it an auto height property of true. Now what this does, the auto height property adjusts the height of the control if you know, the serving size starts to wrap into a certain second row. So as you're wrapping that data, we don't want it to truncate. So I say true, which means it'll grow and shrink as needed in height. Now, as far as the title, it's 20 points. I think I'm okay with that. I'm happy with that. So now I'm gonna close my panel and I'm gonna zoom out all the way because I wanna show you that I'm gonna resize the gallery. So I'm gonna click on Browse Gallery in my Screen Explorer and I'm gonna move the gallery over so that there's room on the left side here. The other thing I wanna do is I wanna remove the separator because I like to separate in a different way. So I'm gonna remove the separator and that was just on the Screen Explorer. And then I'm gonna change the background of the screen to a different fill color. And you'll see why I'm doing this in a few minutes. I'm gonna use the fill color of this rectangle of the at the top, which is called Rectangle Quick Action Bar 1. So I'm gonna use, this is my first function, I'm gonna use the color fade function in the fill of the screen. So color fade, and what I'm saying is I wanna color, I wanna fade out the color of that rectangle's fill by 80%. So if you look up here, when you click after this paren, you'll see that you want the color first, which is the same color in that rectangle. And then I want to fade it by 80%. And basically this means that whatever color that rectangle is, this is going to be 80% shade lighter. Okay. I can also do a negative number here and that makes it darker. Okay. All right, so now that I have a little bit of a shade back there, I'm going to reselect my gallery and I'm going to give it two property changes. In the template fill, I'm going to make the template fill white and then I'm going to give it a padding of, say, 20. And you'll notice what the padding does is it puts 20 pixels around each item for padding, let's go 25, okay? So now we've got a gallery that it's really clear, but this is a long gallery. So I wanna do a different thing than searching here. What I wanna do instead is I wanna put the alphabet over here. And when you click on A, it'll show you your A's. If you click on B, it'll show your B's and so on. So I'm gonna do that in a very easy way. So I'm gonna add a, vertical gallery, and I might want to zoom this out. I'm going to add a vertical gallery, a blank one, right on the left. And this one will also be tied to fruits. Okay, I'm going to leave it blank for now. And I'm going to size it so it just takes up this space on the left side of the page. And then I'm going to move it over. Okay. So it's just, it's just on the left side of this page, okay? Now, I'm going to change the data source slightly because actually I don't really want to use all the fruits. What I want in the items here is I want the first letter of every title in the list. So what I'm going to do is remember we learned the distinct function gives us only one of a unique value in a group of values right? But here's what I want to do. I want to get the left letter of, of the um, title, and I only want the first letter. So what I'm saying here is I want the distinct values in fruits, but I want to get back the first letter on the left of the title. So that's what the left function does. It returns the first letter. Now, we don't see anything yet. Let me zoom in and add a label because we had a blank gallery, so there's nothing in there. So I'm going to hit that pencil icon and add a label. And then you notice that the label is A, all right? And that's because that's the, the first letter result. Now, I'm going to move this up as high as it can go and also change the height of the template so that it matches the letter. And I can do this with my mouse. I can also do that with a function as well. 
And then I'm going to make sure that the letter, and I can just look here and I can rename this letter so I don't forget this is the letter. Letter of alphabet. Or letter alphabet or alphabet letter. <laughs> Whatever you want to call it. And then the gallery here, I'm going to call this filter for fruit. Okay, so. And you know what, it might be wise of me to prefix it with gallery, just so I don't get confused. Gallery filter, let's call it gallery filter, okay? And now we have actually gotten back the first letter of each title that's distinct. Now where this is important is because some, we don't have any fruits that start with C in here right now. And so because we don't have any fruits that start with C, there's no C there. But if somebody adds a C, guess what? It'll pop up there. I don't have to manually configure this filter. It can fix itself as time goes on, right? Now notice, I wanna show you what the write function does real quick. If I did write, it's just the opposite side of the, it's the opposite side of the title. So instead of the left side, one letter, that's the right side, one letter. And so it's, it's giving distinct values for that right side one letter. So it has no relationship to what we're seeing on the screen over here because we haven't made a relationship between these two galleries, but now it's showing the right side. So left and right are pretty common used to pull text out of a, a string of text. And then, and, and we've added the distinct function here to give us only one back so we don't get them all back, right? So now here's where we have fun, okay? So now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select my template letter, which is called letter alphabet, and I'm gonna do a couple things to this template letter. I'm going to, first of all, change the font weight to uh, bold if it's selected. So I'm gonna do, if this item is selected, then font weight is, no, is uh, bold, otherwise font weight is normal. So, and that little red dot at the end, you see it there? That means I forgot a paren, so I'm gonna put that paren there. So now, if this item is selected, it will be bold. I'm gonna do one more thing. I'm also gonna change the fill, right? This will make it pretty obvious, but I don't think we need all this, but just to show you how easy it is to do this, this same thing. If this item is selected, then uh, let's make the fill white. Otherwise, let's do the same thing we did before. Rectangle quick action bar dot fill. And I'm sorry, we want to use the color fade. Color fade. Go to the end and do 80% again. That will make it match the background. And then one more paren. And now when this letter is selected, not only will it be bold, but it'll have a white. Uh, background, I'm also going to put it center. Okay, so now what this means is when I click on these different letters, it's always going to make it clear what I've clicked on. That's all that is. Now let's do the let's do the final thing, which is let's wire this gallery so that it shows us only the letters starting with what's selected on this one. So I'm going to just hide highlight this gallery and we're going to go into the, and you can use your screen explorer if you have trouble highlighting from the screen. But um, I'm gonna go to the items property of here and we're gonna change what's here before because what's here before is looking at the search bar, which by the way, we're not gonna need anymore when we're done. And I'm going to change the starts with here to title. Hold on. I think I just, uh, I meant to, I didn't mean to delete. So let's go back in here. All right. So um, instead of using the text box text here, I'm going to use the gallery, which is gallery filter selected. And I want the result there, which is that letter. And then I want that to be found in the title field in the list and then i want to sort also by title 
And I don't need this if then ascending story, but we could leave it there if we want to, it's no big deal. And you'll see that instantly it works, right? Now, I don't need the search. If you don't want to mess around with the relative formatting, you know, because if I delete this, I'm going to have to do a little bit of fiddling to fix it. So I'm just going to set the, this to false because that means I can add it back later if I want to. Right? And then let me just add a little note here on this uh, screen here. And I'm just going to add today's date which is a today function. So that's like a bonus function we got. And we'll center that. Okay, so now let's run the app. If I click A, it shows me all the A's. If I click G, it shows me all the G. Just a different way of looking at our data. And I think it's so fun, right? And wasn't that easy? No programming needed. I think the one thing I might do is make my gallery a little bit thinner and the template a little bit higher, a little bit taller, because I noticed some things are getting close on the bottom. And I think that is going to be a take. I hope you enjoy trying this out. The left function, the starts with function, we also used a little bit of other things. We used the today function as well today. And we learned about the right function, and finally we learned about color fade. So have fun with these functions. I so look forward to sharing even more tips on how you can use formulas and functions to make your power apps truly awesome. You have a great weekend and I'll talk to you soon.